Okay, so what we're going to do today is connect your final project website to our server space online. So right now we have server space that we use here at the college. Okay, our boss pays for it and this is different classes can use this for different reasons. The main domain is kinlandschool.com. Okay, so all you need to know for me to actually make this connection in Dreamweaver is a collection of three, actually four very simple things. The FTP login, the password, and the location, and then how to get to it if you want to go look at it on the web. So it literally should take me about two minutes, but I'm not going to get you guys connected without making sure you understand what's happening. Okay, and that way when you start bouncing files back and forth, you'll know where it's going. So we have server space here at kinlandschool.com, okay? This goes through a company called GoDaddy. Now I am going to log into their platform and use this as part of this tutorial today. Even though some of you, after you leave this course, may end up going and purchasing hosting, and you know what that is, we've already gone over all these definitions, from another company, and it might look a little bit different. You might go directly through WordPress and set up a site that way using wordpress.org and use their servers to host your, or their registrar as well, to host your domain and your space. I use GoDaddy simply because I think it's simple. It's a tiny bit more than some of the competitors, but not by much. And anytime I can't figure something out, I call their toll-free number and they just explain it to me in a matter of like two or three minutes. I mean, I've actually called them up about things I've been confused about in class. So I've discussed a lot in this course how there's kind of two paths now, depending on what kind of site you want to make. You may go the WordPress route, which we haven't really covered in this course. Uh, there will be one more lecture where I talk about it a bit. You may just do the basic one-off kind of HTML site. Um, I, I tend to think you're still going to be using these skills even if you learn WordPress because let's say you wanted to make a single page site for your buddy's buck and doe or something. It makes more sense to just make a static HTML page as opposed to setting up a, a new database and creating an entire WordPress website just for a single page site with directions to go somewhere, right? So you're still gonna need these tools and no matter which route you take, you're gonna need hosting space and you're gonna need to know how to get into it. So the first thing you're gonna need to do with the company that you're with, whoever it may be, um, and I wasn't logged in, but I thought I, st thought, thought I still was, so I'm just gonna go back in here, is you're gonna need to go to your platform and log in. So I'm gonna log in. Okay, now you guys don't get to see this password. I'm going to give you a password for a specific area in our server where you can go and put files, not this one. So this is paid for by our boss, like I said. So Mary Pierce pays for it, so her name's on the account. So I'm going to go to the account, and usually there'll be some sort of account button when you log into one of these platforms. I'm showing you guys stuff that you're not really going to have to do in my course. I just want you to experience this at least once. So when you get out of my class, you'll be like, oh, I remember when Mike did that. I gotta go buy some hosting from somebody and then I gotta set up a space in there. Usually when you go in there, there'll be a tab for domains and a tab for hosting. I bought both from this company so I can go in through either, either way, go in there and I'm gonna launch my hosting platform. So it launches this as like a separate thing in the browser and from here I'm gonna show you where you're about to put your files. So, when you get in here, you can see right away, like even GoDaddy, which is one of the more generic and common and larger hosting companies out there, they give you the option to just start uploading standard files, HTML if you want, whatever it may be, or to install WordPress and create a new database. So if you want to do a WordPress site, and this is not WordPress.com, WordPress.org will require you to install a database using technology referred to as MySQL. MySQL, so you need a database for that. My WordPress site under MySQL. Um, oh, I don't have it in here, sorry, that's in my account. I don't have any databases in here, but I could easily within minutes just install one. Um, for our course and for the purpose of the, wrapping up the final project, I'd like you guys to just do a basic HTML, CSS site. So you're gonna be putting files into a specific folder on our server space and I set you up as special users. So see this Kinlan student? You are users, FTP users, that can only access this folder in this server. So if I gave you the, the password for this one, 
even though I set up a specific folder for you, if you guys didn't des uh, destinate, <laughs> if you didn't specify the proper destination for your files to go into your personal student folder on our server space, you could do what one of the students did last year, which is upload a bunch of stuff right to the main folder. I never noticed it because I never went looking for it. And some of the files turned out to be viruses. So that's literally why we've been having this problem. Uh, remember at the beginning of the term when we couldn't load up the web workshop at this domain? It was because this student had uploaded stuff there. So now I'm locking you guys into only this folder, okay? And you're gonna have a password for that. So if I go here to the file manager, I'm gonna see all my files on the web um, virtually that are technically stored on their computer, wherever it may be, in California somewhere in some big server farm. They have the, these files stored here like this as folders and you have a folder here and you'll notice when I go into it, everybody's got a folder set up by their last name. If you have the same last name as someone else in the class, and you probably know who you are, I think there's only a few of you, um, your last name is followed by underscore in your first initial, okay? I think there's a Singh and a Patel. No, 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 no. no that's another section. And then uh, I think that's it, actually. Is Singh? Singh's in this class, right? So you guys, so underscore first initial, okay? Other than that, it's just your last name. So you're about to set up a connection to this folder for yourself online, and then all your web files will go up there as you update them, and you'll be able to see them there, okay? This is done using something called FTP, File Transfer Protocol. Now, previous to when hosting companies had their own really handy, simple platform set up on the web like this, we used FTP programs like this one. This is a really... This is actually a really old one. This came out in the like early to mid 90s when the web first was developed and I actually still use it because it's so stripped down and so simple. So I'm gonna connect to my server here. Here, I can connect to the Fanshawe one too, can I? I thought I had a profile set up in here. If I connect to the Kinlan School one, okay, I can see my Kinlan student folder in there. I can see, so, so this is my desktop in that folder, and if I go right to the desktop, I can see my desktop. If I double click this, it'll transfer the file into whatever folder I'm sitting in here for. This is file transfer protocol, okay? This is a really stripped down older version of, the, of this type of program called uh, WSFTP. Um, if I'm doing anything that's a little larger and I don't want it to time out, I use something called FileZilla. Okay, this one actually, if you're uploading something really large, like if I wanted to send somebody like my band's entire album, but in WAV format, that would take like probably an hour to send, usually with a decent connection. I do it here, so if I lost the connection or something, FileZilla actually restarts it and puts it on pause, and you can connect with the same sort of, um, I guess, credentials I'm about to give you to connect in Dreamweaver to your server folder. So file transfer protocol is how we're doing this, and it's technically the same way you're sending changes through a WordPress platform as well, but it's done using a database. So it's, it's slightly different, but there's files going back and forth. And all I'm doing in this tutorial, in this lecture right now is showing you how to make that connection. So you can send all your files up there for the final project, because when you get to your grading appointment, they should have already been up there since Sunday. Okay. Everybody should be up there Sunday. If you make changes since then, that's fine. You can show me in your appointment, Hey, look, I've made these changes, but they should have been up there since Sunday. So, you guys probably already have it open, but I want everybody to open up Dreamweaver. And what we're going to do is make the connection using this FTP technology, but using Dreamweaver as our CMS, our content management system. We talked about that earlier in the semester too. Okay, so Dreamweaver is becoming our CMS or our file transfer protocol program. And we're going to connect to that Kinlan School folder on our server that GoDaddy is hosting for us, okay? So that's all there is to it. Once you complete a website on your machine, on your computer, if it's an HTML, CSS site, and you wanna transport it to the web or you want it visible on the web, you do this by connecting it to the server folder. And this won't involve a whole lot of things. Let me get the lights back on here. Okay, so if you have a Dreamweaver site set up for your final project, and you should, I would like you to please go to that site. Okay, so just for prosperity's sake, 
I'm going to pretend I'm one of those students that hadn't done this yet. And I'm going to call it um, Final Project Fishing Site. Remember, it doesn't matter what you call this. This is just the name. You're giving it in Dreamweaver. Uh, I don't have a folder set up for it yet. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to make sure I'm in my sites folder, which I am. And I'm going to create a folder called Fishing Site and hit save. So I've, I've made my site. That's it. That's all I asked you guys to do at the beginning of class. Just make sure you have one of these made. Now, with this made, go either to here and manage sites or go here and manage sites, okay? Now, you will have far less crap in here than I do, okay? I've got a lot of websites set up on my machine. Um, even with my WordPress site, I still have a connection made in Dreamweaver because I like to do some editing to my CSS in Dreamweaver still. So I, I want to go to the site that I created for my final project. You'll probably only have one or two or three here. So go to the final project one and double click on it. Uh, what did I call that? Final project fishing site. Okay, so, so far up to this point, all you've done in, in the site definition for, in Dreamweaver are these two things. Now we're going to go to here. Okay, everybody should have this up and you should all be doing this with me. This is why this class is so important because now you don't have to go home and watch the video unless you're watching this right now because I'm recording this as the video. But this is done. This is worth quite a few points on your final project. And I'm going to show you that at the end of the lecture. I'll bring that up at the end. But this is one of the things you need to have done. And your site needs to be uploaded by Sunday. How do you get that window open? Okay. <laughs> okay. Again, from one of two places, stop doing what you're doing on your computer and do this. I don't believe you. <laughs> okay, I believe you. Go here, go to manage sites, or go here and go to manage, wherever you can find to get to manage sites, and then double click on your site, the one that you want to make the connection with, which is the final project site. This window will come up that you're used to. You guys have dealt with this. You did this on the test. This is just the site definition. All this is is naming the site and connecting it to a folder. That's it. Now, under servers, you're clicking down here, you're going to connect it to our server folder on the web. So when you go here, you'll see nothing here. You should see nothing there. Hit this plus sign, OK? Is everybody with me? Stop me if you're not. Like anybody who's not. OK, good. You guys are good. Call it remote server. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but sometimes people make a testing server. So that just, I don't even want to get into that. Just, all you need is the one server connection. Call it remote server. I like to call it remote server because that's what it's called over here when you go and see what you have on the server as opposed to on your computer. So now you're going to be able to look one versus the other. And your computer, which is technically, you know, the, the server, I suppose, or is, is hosting your web files locally, is going to be up here when you're on local server and when you go to remote it will show you what you have in our server folder with godaddy if you don't see something on the web after you've refreshed it's probably just because you hadn't uploaded it yet or you didn't forget you didn't remember to save before you did so this is going to make that connection before you put this stuff in because i'm about to give this to you check this like click this box and make sure this says use passive ftp and make sure that's checked um, in general, unless you're doing advanced stuff, you won't have to change any of the settings in here for the server connection, okay? This should always be port 21, unless you're working with a hosting company that has that set up differently. And you should be going with passive FTP, and this should be FTP, all right? Now I'm gonna give you these things. So FTP address, username, and password. And then we're gonna have the root directory, which will identify where in our in our main server folder for the students, you'll be able to go and find your stuff, okay? And put your stuff. So clearly this is gonna be kind of small on the screen as I type it in, so I'm gonna go here and put it up on the screen for you and you can put this in. Don't worry about the root directory quite yet, just get these three things in there. Now this is cap sensitive. I've talked a lot this semester about how important it is when you're naming files and drawing file paths to places. If you have capital letters or small letters, that comes into play, okay? Kinlandschool.com is the FTP address. Sometimes if you're working with a hosting company that doesn't do it that way, they'll give you an actual numbered address, like a big long number. Um, most larger upscale, like larger scale hosting companies will give you your FTP address as the main domain, okay? Username is Kinland student, 
all lowercase, no spaces, no nonsense. Password is capital K-I-N and then small S-T-U 2013 percent. So KIN STU 2013 percent. But this is capital. So if I were to type this in, do not hit done. You're not done yet, okay? Don't hit save. Sorry, save. Even after you hit test, if it works, don't hit save yet. Okay, username is Kinlin student. Password, I'm going to shift K I N S T U 2013%. Hit the test button. Everyone should hit the test button. If you get this, you know how to type, okay? If you don't get this, you also probably know how to type, but you have a typo. All right. There are two reasons you don't successfully connect to the server. And I've set this folder up for you and I've set a specific password for you. I don't do this to make your life harder. Like this should work. If it's not working, it's because you've lost your connection to the internet or you have a typo, period. That's it. Those are the only two reasons. Now that you've tested that, you know it works. You're going to test it one more time, but you're first going to put in your root directory. So. I'm going to use somebody that's not here as an example. Um, uh, Price, Tabitha. Okay, so sorry, Tabitha, if you're watching the video, you're, you're my, you just didn't happen to be in class today. So. so I know you're not doing this at the same time as me, right? The rest of you should all put your last name there. That's your root directory. And I didn't spell it wrong because I took it directly from FOL, okay? So however it's, well, that's not to say whoever put it in FOL didn't spell it wrong. However it's spelled in FOL is how your name is put in here. All right, if you need to clarify with me, like, where's Gino? Okay, his is Matthew. I didn't put both, both last names in there, but um, if you need to clarify with me, just ask me. But hit test again, because you want to test and make sure your folder's there as well. So once again, I connected to your web server successfully. So do not hit save until you have a folder name in root directory and you've tested it and it worked. If you don't put a folder here, what you'll end up doing is uploading your files to the main Kinlan student folder, which is not a big deal. I'll just go delete them if I notice that. But you're going to keep going to the address you think your stuff's supposed to be at, and it won't be there. All it is is file pass, going right back to the very beginning of this class. Okay? And I'm going to show you. So I've hit test. My root directory is there. It works. So once again, I'll pull this up on the screen. If you're watching the video, you can just pause this. These are the four things you need to put in there. Okay, and this ultimately should be the domain. Don't worry if it doesn't populate down here like that. That's actually incorrect because I've made a subfolder for you, but that's the only folder you have access to. Dreamweaver doesn't really understand that. So your domain, if you want to put the proper domain in there so you can like test it on the web via Dreamweaver, which is not a big deal. You don't have to do that. You'd have to add the Kinlan student folder after kinlanschool.com and then put your last name in, okay? But that's not that important. And if you decide you want to do that, you can always go and throw it back in later. It's, it's right here, I'm giving it to you, okay? So that's the full address. So if you need to get back in there and you've already saved it and closed down Manage Sites and all that, big deal. You go back to Manage Sites, okay? You go back to the site where you made the connection, you go to Servers, you double click on the server and you change it and you fix it, all right? It's not that hard to get back in there. Okay, and these are the things that you need in there. The only thing that will be different for any student in my course for this semester is this part. And you guys will be able to figure out what your last name is. Notice that I put no capital letters in there. All right, now that I'm connected, if I were to, now I, I don't know what Tabitha has been working on. I don't have her site here. Question, yes. Oh. Yeah, sorry, and that came up on mine really briefly there too, and that's totally fine. Um, hit okay. Yeah, hit OK. You're going to get various messages throughout the process of now that you're connected. Um, here, let me connect to somebody else and then I'll recreate the ca cache. Who else is not here? Uh, Matthew. How do I spell that folder name? Uh, yeah, but I think he's only got one L. Is that, are you sure? Let's just check. Who else is absent? Um, oh, I don't have them here. They're on the remote server. Oh, which is here.
Okay, come on. Next page. See, so everybody's in here. Now, the fact that you can see that you're all in here does open up the door to some interesting stuff. So I'm just going to talk about that. He only has Connor, one T. He's not in class. Who? Connor, McDonald. Oh, did I do that again? Yeah, whatever. They're just de they'll just be dead folders. Don't worry about it. Thank you, though. Um, I could I could. Who else? It's Connor. No, I have two McDonald's. Wait, I have two McDonald's. Yeah, that might be. Don't. That don't mess with me. <laughs> that might be another one. Yeah, thank you though. I you really paying attention. I I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That's it. I don't usually record videos during the middle of a class, but I, this was the easiest way to get this one up there quickly for everybody. So you guys are getting to hear all my banter with everybody. But uh, so I tested it again. It works. Now watch very closely when I hit save. And then I hit save. And then I hit done. Oh, it didn't do it. Usually a message comes up that recreates the cache because you've made a new server connection. And that's totally fine and you can just click OK. Um, other things that happen when you're uploading files, you might get a message that says, you've already uploaded this file. It's because you've uploaded it from another server connection, like another internet connection, from another, uh, another FTP address, like another IP address, sorry, another IP address. So they want to make sure that you're not going to overwrite changes that you didn't mean to overwrite. As long as you know what you're doing, you can click OK. Um, other things like when you go to put the whole site at once, it says, do you want to upload the entire site? So most of the prompts you'll get when you're uploading files are not a big deal. Uh, and you guys should be on local view. I haven't gone to remote view yet. So I'm going to create a blank HTML file. Um, hi, mom. No, I didn't. Yeah, I just save. Yeah, save. Yeah, we already did that. Just done, save, hit, just keep hitting save. Hi, Mom. I got a website. This is nothing fancy here, okay, obviously. Um, just so you can see it change. Okay, so. Yep. Okay. This? Nothing. Just that's it. Just your last name. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll come back to that in a minute. Don't worry about that. Um, okay, so I'm making a basic HTML page. I'm going to save it in my root directory for phishing site, which it went right to because that was the last folder I created in here. I'm going to call it index so it loads up as the main page. Okay, and I'm going to close it. Now, here's how you get to your site to look at see what's going on. All right, I'm going to go to kinlandschool.com forward slash Kinlan student. So now I'm in the folder. Look, now I'm in this folder inside of my main directory. And the only reason kinlanschool.com is my main directory, even though I have numerous URLs, domains here, is because it was the first one I bought. So it automatically defaulted to the main one and I never changed it. And that's usually the way most people set it up. I have tons of domains in my other account. And I'll, I'll show you how that works here at the end here. Where we're just wrapping up here. Um, so. When I go into this folder, then I'm starting to access all these files. You still won't see anything unless somebody accidentally puts an index file in here. And then I'm going to go further and go to my root directory, which is Matthew with one T, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, what the heck, Mike? This isn't working. What are you talking about? Well, all you've done so far is make the connection. Now that the connection's made, any and all files you have set up in here that you want to see on the web, you can sit on the file and use what's called the put button. Okay, so if I go to the remote server right now, this is the reason I see nothing. The folder is empty, okay? If I go here, uh, sorry, if I go back to local view right here and I click on the file and I put it up there, and I did this so it was just one file, and now I refresh my page. Hi, mom, I got uh, this on the web, like that. No, you could, well, you have to be able to click on the files you want to put you or to upload. You don't ever have to go to remote view. I was just showing you in the remote server, which is also what you're seeing here. If I go to Matthew's folder um, right here, Geno's. Yeah, that's another one. That's another prompt you'll get. So if you're uploading index from your page, 
and you upload it without the CSS or any of the images, you're going to see the index file, but it's going to look like your CSS is broken. So Dreamweaver is kind of smart about that. It says, do you want to upload any files that are connected to it, which is dependent files? You just click yes. But if you're going to do your whole site, here, I'll show you as an example. Um, The whole button, yeah, that, that uploads the whole site. So here's an example. This is, a, this is a website right now that I have at this domain. And this is in our server space. It's in the same server space, so I want you guys to see this. It's for some, it's kind of defunct now. It's just up for prosperity purposes still, but it's, it's still sitting there. So if I were to go to the remote server, for example, and I have this server connection made to this folder, I'm going to delete everything here. Okay, so while that's deleting, I just want to show you something. So in my main folder, I have a folder called Exchange Trade Wins. That happens to have the same name as the folder on my machine. You're, you're probably going to start to notice now, even though I've been harping this whole semester on how you have to name all your folders with no small letters, no capital letters, sorry, and make sure the names are always easily transferable. I'm allowing you to transfer from one folder inside of it to the inside of another folder. So the name of the root directory really doesn't even matter. So you, the name of your root directory for your final project website and your computer might be final project. And it's all the files inside of that are going to the folder online named Matthew or Price. It doesn't matter if they don't have the same name. Unless you want to keep your stuff really organized and you actually have a server space with a bunch of domains and you want to make sure you know what's where. So in the Exchange Tradewinds folder, Okay, I used to have a website. I just deleted it. Now, if I go back out further and I go to domains, right here, let me just go to, what? I mean, how could I be? <sighs> yeah, I never logged out. It, it times you out pretty often just so, just, just to keep things more secure, right? So here are the domains that I, now in my other account, I have tons of these things. I only have a few here. But clearly, I don't want to have to do this every time I go to the Exchange Tradewinds website. So right now, the website's gone. So I'm trying to figure out where it is, right? And it's just because I haven't uploaded it. So how can I take that long to refresh a blank website? If I were to go to kinlandschool.com forward slash exchange dash Tradewinds, it would also load up the index file just like Exchange Tradewinds does. I'm going to show you how that works too. So this isn't really anything you guys have to do. I just want you to understand this. It's just part of my lecture. So right now the server's empty, the server folder. But the, but the local view for Exchange Tradewinds is full of a website. So I'm going to sit on the very top folder. And this is how you would first upload your entire site at once. And then you want to upload each file at a time as you're fixing it. If you're making changes to tons of stuff, maybe every once in a while you should be uploading the whole site. So I'm going to upload the whole site, which means it's going to ask me, do you want to put the entire site? And I say yes. So now it's uploading. Okay, while it's doing that, I'm going to show you something. So if I go down here in my hosting control panel to hosted domains. So this is different than going to domains. And this is going to be a little different every time you buy hosting space from somebody. But what I did was I bought these domains for this exchange trade school program. And I linked them all to the same folder. So that way, instead of having to go, and this is what it says if there's nothing there. It'll usually just say forbidden. I'll go to kinlandschool.com exchange dash tradewinds. This loads up. Now, it's still loading up the site, so I still don't have images and some of the FT, uh, CSS and stuff. It loads this up from that folder. This is the index page. Come on. Where is it at? Oh, it's going along. Come on. So the very same way I'm loading up the index page directly from that folder, if I've purchased a domain then, and I want that domain to load up from that folder. And this is why you set up like a canonical. There, it's finally there. So this is kinlandschool.com forward slash. If I go to exchange trash tradewinds.com, it loads up the same exact page. So you guys don't have your own domain which means you have to put in the whole path. So that's why, because you don't have your own domain, your domain is kinlandschool.com in the folder, Kinland Student, in your personal folder for your website, and you got stuff online. It's that simple. 
So getting it up is literally sitting on the file or the folder. If you want to upload a whole folder at once, you sit on it, you click upload. It doesn't have to be zipped or anything like that. That's the cool thing about FTP. If you get a file into your remote server that you know is right and then you screw it up on your computer, you can go, you don't even have to go to remote server. You can still be on local view and you can sit on the folder or file and click the get button and it'll get the, that version of the file from the remote server. So essentially, as soon as you put your site on the server, you're backing it up because you also have it on your computer. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I wanted to show you. So I took something that could be done in a, like two minutes, which is just connecting it. And, and I've tried to explain to you what's actually happening as that connection is made. And again, if the connection's not working for you, it's because you have a typo. Um, now, if we jump over to FOL, and we take a look at what this is worth, and this is important, um, you'll see that connecting to the server, as simple as it is, as literally like, is inputting four things in boxes. That's all it is. This is still worth quite a bit on your final project because this represents uh, like a major turning point. Once you've created a website, you wanna start getting the things online. Um, and this is a good reminder for you as to where you can go and find out what's uh, final project. So it's the third module down, final project details. If I go all the way down in the PDF, you'll see that point breakdown. Okay, and you'll see uh, fully live on the web, seven points. So seven points out of 100% is for typing in this. And then clicking a button. So you put it. Yes? Uh, yeah, it will never show up on the web unless you actually upload it. And that's why it's sometimes easier. If you're going to do a bunch of stuff to your website, just sit down with it for an hour or two, do a bunch of stuff, and then go to the top level folder and upload the whole site. If you have a lot of heavy duty files, like you have media and videos and stuff like that, maybe you can go and just control click and just, just pick the folders with the files in it that you've changed. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple process, guys. And like, I don't just use... FTP for full websites, right? If I want to do something quick, like send my buddy a song or send, send my parents like some kind of, like a big zip folder full of photos, I use FTP and I upload it to my server so that they can just click on a link in an email and download it. And I don't, I don't have to attach something that's like three gigs to an email, right? You can use server space for things like that too. And that can be done by simply connecting. Don't use my server space for stuff like that. Like, but you can, we got unlimited space, but by simply connecting to the folder, okay? Um, so that's it uh, for the connection lecture. I'm gonna stop recording here and then we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna actually uh, do the analytics code in our next component, which will be an even quicker one.